Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very good evening and welcome to another edition of Health Matters. I'm Khawa Solomon and I'll be with you for the next hour or so. Please do stay with us as we unpack what you need to eat, yes, during the holy month of Ramadan. We know this is the last show before, just literally a few days before this uh, beautiful month and uh, we've now decided to focus on food. Yes, food is the biggest conversation you are having before this holy month of Ramadan, uh, yet that is not just all we're staying away from. Um, there's so much more. But with me uh, to unpack this is none other than uh, Dr. Shaida Omar. Warm welcome and assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to South Africa. Wa alaikum salam. MashaAllah. I hope you enjoyed your trip. Uh, I know it probably wasn't a, a desk because now you need a desk <laughs> after your trip, but we're so glad that you are here with us now. Alhamdulillah. Shukran. So also with us is clinical nutritionist and to ad advise us on all those good and bad foods is a uh, Elenia. Elenia, yes. do I do I say your surname? I'm gonna try. Kolo Katronis. Kolo Katronis. Ten out of ten. <laughs> a perfect. bit of Greek in Italy. Perfect. Welcome. Perfect. Thank you for and you're so beautifully me. dressed as well. So thank you so much to our thank studios. We know that you were local, so no stranger. Love being um, thank um, you. And we appreciate thank your time. You. But Andy Shida, at this time and also to our viewers, we know that you are thinking about food, you're thinking about what's in your freezer, what to pack in, what to unpack. Um, you know. But we're also saying we need to be healthy. So how exactly are we going to be healthy? We'll be talking about that, inshallah. So Shaida, with that introduction, please go forth. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillah, we've come to the most blessed time of the year, Ramadan, as you've so beautifully highlighted. It is a month where our believers learn to exercise self-restraint and control. And as you've said, I think a lot of it is on the preparation of the spiritual benefits, the merits, the objective of self-restraint and sacrifice. Yet we seem, and, and of course we're looking at food, the objective of food, what are the benefits that we derive from this month? Yet our emphasis is not on the deprivation, but on the indulgence, the preparation, the indulgence of rich, uh, refined sugared foods everything one can think of the days are actually spent on preparation thoughts for preparing food and hours spent on actually preparing that food and very little time spent on consumption of the mm. food and actually what can we derive from the spiritual month of Ramadan I think it is also important to understand that a lot of the food that we are uh, absorbing, consuming, are not actually beneficial to the system. And we are so beautifully, uh, you so beautifully articulated the clinical nutritionist who will guide and advise, give advice on tips on what one should be eating during this time. Because we need to look at how to enhance our performance, our output, because often the ethos or the belief is that oh in Ramadan I cannot exercise I cannot do this I mm. cannot do that a lot of limitations and restrictions yes, in actual fact that should not be if we are eating appropriately and correctly absolutely true uh, Dr. Shaira Shukran so much uh, for uh, for that uh, bit of advice and and so much more that's going to come from that as well so uh, Elenia tell us exactly why uh, what, exactly what happens to us when we are fasting quickly Lots of things happen <laughs> on a physical base. If you're mm. just looking at the body, you know, when you, when you stop giving the body fuel, mm. food, it starts to release fat stored because it needs energy. We all know that. But there's okay. so much other things that are happening on a cellular level. Okay. Um, a release of inflammation, detoxification, your body gets cleaned easily. Mm. Um, when there's nothing going in the body, the body can't do anything other than eliminate, mm. push out what it doesn't need. And not only that, just mentally, your mental capacity is so much clearer. You become so much less aggressive. Mm -hmm. We find a lot of times when people are doing these fasts, they're calling it intermittent fasting. But I mean, people have been fasting for a very yes. long time before it became mm -hmm. fashionable. Mm -hmm. And it is actually quite beneficial if the person is of the correct age and doesn't have a medical condition. Fasting mm -hmm. is actually a miraculous thing. Because um, when they do tend to eat after the fast and they're eating good things, the good things, 
You know, their bodies just stand them in such good stead. Mm. We see a lot of depressions that are eliminated. We see a lot of weight loss. We see a lot of organs that are either completely repaired or healed to a certain extent where it doesn't need medications and that kind of thing. So it's, it's a beautiful thing to do if it's done correctly. So Anshana, we understand that um, perform, performing a certain act and practicing something on a regular basis allows you your brain to train repetitively, to live that lifestyle, to, to sort of repeat that actions over and over. And in this holy month of Ramadan, re prepares us almost for that so-called good life that we mean to be having spirit, eating and looking after ourselves. And with that in mind, what is your thoughts on this holy month of Ramadan when it does come to food and spirit and, and the way of life? So I'm actually just something, you know, that Ilania said mm. triggered the whole concept of when she said that the brain is so much more alive, so mm. much more alert, the, uh, it's hypersensitive to everything around oneself. And the misperception or there's this myth that during the month of Ramadan, when one is fasting, the mood levels drop. Mm. I think we need to also understand that, yes, the one needs to take cognizance that the mood levels will drop depending on what you actually Correct. eat, I love that. the Correct. kind of foods that are absorbed and consumed. And that is where this mm. belief, you know, continues and mm. people believe, feel, oh, in Ramadan, I cannot do this. I cannot do that. And, and so if so you can correct. perhaps speak more to that, yes. because I think that is critical yeah. for people mm. to appreciate and understand true what, what's what's changing so what yeah. does happen what does happen is that when when you, you it affects people differently and at different stages and for different lengths mm. i mean when you just you know when you start the first couple of days or maybe the week the first week or two you're feeling at your lowest because there's a lot going on mm. you know that you're not giving your body as much as what you're giving it before so now your liver has to start sourcing whatever it can okay. um, amino acids um, fat whatever it can and when it's doing that because you're not giving it anything you tend to become very weak you tend to feel a bit sluggish mm. but those things pass and you find that the longer you're doing it the more and I love what you what you said there. You literally do become a lot more alive where eventually you start to perform at work if you're studying um, energy levels. You know when I work with families they have a child that's ill and they're doing they're doing the fasting and so on. Even the child performs better at school, um, given the child was 13 years old, but still. It's actually not as detrimental and as scary as what people make it out to be, because once you're actually doing it, mm. it's such an uh, awakening. It's actually a beautiful thing. So what I should we be doing in the right way <laughs> when we are fasting? Let's maybe start with breakfast. What must we be eating at uh, that time of the morning? You need to ensure that what you're going to eat is going to sustain you during your fast, simply meaning you need to eat foods that are not industrialized, not high in sugar, only because you can get sugar from fruits, those are good sugars. But anything with high sugar contents is only going to make you want to crave more. Mm -hmm. And to suppress that is very difficult. Foods that have a lot of natural fluids, like for example, uh, cucumbers, tomatoes, good sources of proteins, those kinds of things sustain you. So in the morning, um, you don't really need to vastly change what you eat because mm. unless you're eating jars of Nutella and two liters of Coke, then I mean, I suppose you're okay. Okay, there's a nice morning. That's um, beautiful. Yeah, 10 out breakfast. of 10. <laughs> so we have bananas, kiwi, some muesli, yogurt and orange juice, a okay. boiled egg. Um, yep. What are we giving our body there? Everything that you need, because okay. remember that even though you're it's doing nice this and balanced. beautiful, because mm. you're still going to work, you're still being a mom, you might still be going to gym, you need a bit of everything, you mm. need sugar. And there's very good sugars in the picture. So if we're struggling proteins. with some people that have uh, an option or preference to not do the yogurt and the muesli and maybe a boiled egg, um, could they fry it? What are the better options to poach it? You know, how do we sort of exchange if that? If they're going if they're to not, fry yeah. because it's in such limited forms, mm -hmm. a bit of olive oil, um, some wilted spinach, some cucumber, some avo. It's not hard to choose the right kind of foods. And I know we're always on the go and it's hard. But I mean, we also need to understand that we do need a bit of sugar. Sugar. Banana is not going to kill you or make you pick up 10 kilos. So, I mean, there's so many options to choose for what is right for you and your family. Mm -hmm. It's not as restricting as what people anticipate it to be. So so I think it's so important that people, you know, when you speak about the energy levels, eating the correct foods, 
in order for them to continue performing. And when I say performing, performing at their optimal and, and maximum mm -hmm. levels. Mm -hmm. What would you advise? I mean, you've spoken about the oats and the bananas and the nuts, and we talk about complex uh, carbs, the mm -hmm. carbohydrates, the millets, the beans, etc. Yeah. But what would you recommend? Because I think coming from, uh, you know, an Asian Indian background and, and a Muslim background, our foods are very refined. Mm -hmm. And during the month of Ramadan, the, the, you know, there are special foods mm -hmm. that are prepared. Now we have the halim, which has a lot of lentils. Mm -hmm. We know there's a lot of merit and healing uh, Correct. ingredients in that. Yes. But perhaps you could guide us more specifically that would enhance the mood levels, firstly, mm -hmm. the, the, the performance, because it's about output as well at the end of it so that people do You're not function yes correct. yes and then we're gonna have to hold that thought <laughs> just for a minute if you may we will take also your calls after this short break please do stay with us as we talk about food during the holy month of ramadan stay with us Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. This is Health Matters on ITV Networks. Uh, that, uh, that is the website itvnetworks.tv and you can catch us live if you tell your family to live stream right now anywhere in the world and they can watch us and find out all um, they need to know about eating healthy during the holy month of Ramadan. We will also be making this program available so if you have missed it on the YouTube channel just contact our office hours to find out when it will be available inshallah. I'm Khawa Salomon. We are taking your calls on any questions you have, nutritional calls uh, with regards to what you need to eat. Even those that are, uh, have, you know, the chronic illnesses, we will also guide you. We have clinical nutritionist in studio with us who's working towards her doctorate. Alania, thank you so much for your time once again. Um, Dr. Shaida Omar, a medical expert in studio with us today, inshallah. And I rudely interrupted the answer just before the break. So, <laughs> Shaida, just give us a recap. No, I think Ilania can respond to that. You did. You, you raised a very important question to be more specific about what a meal should be like. Okay. So, for example, if we're looking at a family with children, it needs to be balanced and mm -hmm. it needs to be varied. So when it's time to start eating, something that has variety is important. If they are an oats kind of a family or a toast kind of a family with some fruit or some allowed animal for example, cheeses or eggs or whatever it is, those are things that are varied and good because it's important for children to have every kind of food type that's mm -hmm. going to sustain them throughout the day. I mean, if you're a weight watcher and you want to do the protein thing, that's okay, but that's not going to stand you in good stead really because eventually mm -hmm. you do start to have a side effect. Okay. So it needs to be a meal that is varied. It has to have the food groups in that's you know that's not just one food group that's important to know because every kind of food group and the more of it that you eat has different ways of sustaining you throughout the day. So Ilania I think just in conversations with many people and Hawa will also agree to this is that people also see this as an opportunistic month to lose weight right. <laughs> <laughs> and what is your response to that? Yeah so after New Year people say no I'm not eating so I'm gonna yeah. lose weight. <laughs> I, I, we've had this conversation before, I've had this conversation before with friends of mine and indeed they do lose weight mm -hmm. because that's what's going to happen in any way, they will lose weight. But when we have the conversation two to three months afterwards and they've gone back to eating whatever it is that they want to, they have significantly picked up that weight and so it's not a sustainable way. Mm -hmm. We have to take the focus on why there's the fast, mm -hmm. it's not about that. It's about so much more. So, so when we're eating breakfast, I just want to get that done and dusted. <laughs> yes, okay. So let's do breakfast quickly. And, you know, in plain layman terms, you said for all, for all food groups. As many um, as you can. Water included. It's of a food. Course, of course. <laughs> um, and you've mentioned oats, you know, the healthy muesli, yogurt. Um, this was lovely. Orange juice and egg. Um, and then the... 
how are you making some of the foods? You've mentioned oats because you get the quick oats, you get Correct. the microwave oats. What is the most healthy options? Because there are these um, alternates, but you want to stick to something whole That's grain as and as possible. 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 So take just, us through the just, right stuff. Of let's just get the jungle oats that's in a box. Okay. okay. If we're looking the at that. The old fashioned The old fashioned ones, the old that you put on the stove. Thank you. That okay. makes the mess around the stove plate and it takes your day to clean. <laughs> Boils that, over. That one. Okay. Fruits, that, fruits that are important to sustain sustain you. Uh, bananas are great. Um, grapes have a lot of sugar. The kids can have okay. that, but for but an bananas adult... bananas can cause induced constipation as well. It can, but if we're looking at a functioning adult who needs to do the soccer runs that's on the move all the time, okay. it won't do it. So soccer moms and, you know... If you're working road, a yeah. 9 to 5, if you feet. have to be... You know, okay. if, you're, if you're not sedentary, if you're an active person, that banana is going to stand you in good stead. Or potassium, magnesium, yes. All yes. the things that you need to get okay. you through your day without eating. Because people worry, you know, that banana is going gonna, is gonna to sit there and yeah. it's going to be of a problem. We can discuss yeah. this later on. The only time when raw foods become a problem is if you're eating it alongside a prepared meal, so for example, a lentil bake, and you're having, which doesn't really happen, but if you're having the fruit salad with the lentil bake and you're overeating, okay. or you eat just before you go to sleep, mm -hmm. that's when you notice the bloats and the gases and okay. all of that. So don't do that. Don't do Stay that. <laughs> Try not to do that. Try okay. to eat two hours before you go to sleep. Um, Toasts are great, um, allowed cheeses, that's mm. a great protein. So I mean it when I say it, a, a, a varied way to start the day is great and also mm. to end your day, you know, to... So for people that are hooked onto caffeine, like the coffee yes. and tea, would you recommend that they drink it in the morning, you know, Yes. Do they continue? I try to tell. Because we know that people suffer with withdrawal. They the do. first two weeks, I know, I, I, I crave for that Correct. cup of tea in the morning. Correct. So I, I've had this conversation with a, f a family I've worked with before. Enjoy your cup of coffee, but it has to be in the morning. You don't do it before you go to bed. I mean, it's not a good idea. <laughs> So just in the morning is the, the time to do all the things that you need to do that you can't really do mm. in the evenings afterwards. Okay. Have so, your cup of coffee, yeah. enjoy it. Don't do it in excess. Don't dine four cups of coffee because you need to get your fix in. Do. <laughs> Once enough. Okay, so I'm still on bread uh, for the morning. You say bread, we do white toast, um, you know, whether that's the long life bread that you're putting, uh, the whole wheat or the crush wheat or the two versions of both. There's such a lot on the shelves. Guide us into some good stuff. Ideally, um, ideally. Yeah. The, the breads that are darker in color are the best only because they haven't been industrialized to a point to look like something it's mm. not. If you're walking in a wheat field, the color is not white. So I always tell people okay. the same thing with cheese. When you're milking a cow, just as an example, Creamy. the milk yeah. is white, it's not mm. yellow. So it's those little things. Mm. Any bread that is darker in color is better. If you're having two or three slices of white bread, it's not going to kill you, it's mm. okay. Try to toast it because that burns out most of the gluten, so it okay. won't cause that bloat, won't allow it to sit there. So it's just small things that, that are insignificant, but do tend to build up. You and know, that and we don't know. We actually no, don't know those don't little know. things. So for, for people that enjoy eating their wholesome meal in the morning for breakfast, I'm talking about a meal that they would consume during lunchtime or during supper time. Yes. Eating that uh, for breakfast, what is your response to that? Depending what that is, it's okay. So if it's if rice it, they're yes, eating in the morning? that's fine, because you need to remember that that rice is still going to do a service to you throughout mm. the day, because it's sustaining you, it's slow release, it's not bad for you. As I said before, it's not a jar of Nutella. I always actually thought it was bad, because no. you missed out on that meal, there was this delicious tomato bredi last night, and you were just so tired or too full, and the morning was like, okay, I'm just going to have a little bit... The reason it's okay is because morning. the reason it's okay is because Whoa, that's that's a full back meal, hey? That, that's it's a definitely very, not very breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Atishaya, is that what you were talking about? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not for breakfast. Not, for, not all of it for breakfast. There's a few things that you could have for okay. breakfast that's not too bad. You need to remember that my response to that being okay, it's because it's okay for now. Okay. You're not going to eat that, then two hours later have a sandwich and then have a big lunch mm -hmm. and then have a snack that could be four rusks and two cups of tea and a slice of cake and then a big dinner. Mm -hmm. So for now, that really is okay because you're still eating something that's going to fuel you for the rest of the day when you're not eating anything. Okay. So in this circumstance, it really is okay. 
So for somebody that has a plate of chips, fried chips in the morning. That, that's not okay. I'm not happy with that. <laughs> okay. okay, thank <laughs> you. All right, let's talk about children. Yes. Um, they are also very busy. Maybe they get up in the morning mm. with us, those that you know do not necessarily have to fast all day. Great. We'll wait, maybe delay their breakfast a little bit when they, because I did that with my kids. Um, they'd have a nice breakfast, you know, a big breakfast in Good. the morning before school. So um, then they just wouldn't have lunch. And alhamdulillah, they would do the entire day. So there are those that are actually getting up with us in the morning That's before lovely. sunrise. I'm pleased with that. Um, you know, following the whole sort of, Beautiful. Uh, you know, what needs to happen. And for them in the morning, what, what, what is your advice? Is it the same? It's the same. Children should ideally eat what the parents are eating because they're learning from us in any way. Mm. I find it very unbalanced if the parents are eating one meal and the children something else. So, Ilania, a lot of our children are fasting already at the age of eight and nine years yeah. old. Um, and then they have a full day at school in terms of sports activities as well. What? How would you guide parents on specific things that they should encourage and motivate their children to eat for question. breakfast? Yes. Mm -hmm. Not only for sports activity and to keep energy levels up, you have to look at mental capacity mm. at school because mm. they're going to school to mm. learn. Mm. And a lot of children, when you find that their parents are inundating them with the wrong foods, they cannot learn. Whereas if you're giving your children a brilliant start to the day, even if it's a fast, their mental capacity stays at a peak level. So good foods like we've just suggested now and varied again. Mm. The good kinds of toasts, good kinds of proteins, good fruits, um, oats is great. Those kind of things are, are good for children. The minute it becomes industrialized and too much of a industrialized type of food, so for mm. example, sugars, sugars are awful. Whether you're doing a fast or not, it's not good mm. for anyone really. So if they're getting a raw natural sugar in the form of a fruit, sustained energy in the form of oats, toasts, a good protein that will keep their appetites. Mm you know, because that's what protein does, they're, they're going to be okay. And what about milk? Milk is fine. My okay. children drink lots of milk and they're okay. great. I love milk. So I found for those that doesn't quite want to do um, the, 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 the cooked porridge, the oats, which is so <laughs> good for you, um, interestingly, putting in a cardamom or a stick cinnamon, a little love bit of it. fine stick cinnamon just helps to enhance the flavor of it That's as well. Brilliant. Some honey or golden syrup that you've made yourself. That's fantastic. Um, is a brilliant That's way to get it in. Because they're still, they're still getting it in. Yeah. And how about so a smoothie? My kids have smoothies all the time. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's brilliant that you're talking about this, not for our kids, not just for the holy month of Ramadan, but also general, as a general good mm. breakfast. We need to pay the bills. We'll come back with more <laughs> nutritional advice with our clinical nutritionist and uh, medical expert, Dr. Shahid Omar. In studio with us, we are taking your calls. Our last show just before the holy month of Ramadan and what important what it is. As the, That's all we're talking about. It's food. So we continue this conversation just after this. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back, a very good evening. This is Health Matters and nutritional food to eat during this holy month of Ramadan. What are you eating? What do you want to eat? We're still going to go get, we're going to get to the bad eats and how we should be transforming it and if we still should be including it because all we're talking about is yes, the type of foods and let me tell you half of that foods, if not all of it is savouries, but yet we want to eat healthy. We have a clinical nutritionist in studio with us working on her a doctorate, Elania, and uh, Dr. Shaira Omar, our medical expert as well on our panel. So just to quickly wrap up breakfast, we're going to move on swiftly to exercise and people with chronic illnesses and Shida has mentioned but for those people that do not do breakfast I can't do breakfast I'll just have some water give me a date um, what is your um the doctor brought up the most amazing thing <laughs> yeah, is a smoothie yeah. is a smoothie yes everything that you need you throw it in the blender you blend it it looks pretty it smells nice you have four sips and it's done it go. doesn't need to be hard. You for, don't for need the to no breakfast for people. the no breakfast people. You need something, guys. So yeah. it might as well just be a smoothie, and it's good for you. So. Okay, smoothies. So you can hide all those other things for the kids as well that also don't do breakfast. <laughs> 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 and Shada, we looked at some of the um, 
um, we spoke earlier about you know the emotional effect that that mm -hmm. fasting does hit the body with before we quickly do exercise. Um, I want to run through that and sort of the repetitive um, nature of something that you know the brain is trained to do. So I think this is so important mm -hmm. that you're raising this hour because I think with Ilanya here to assist us and guide the viewers, we know that many people suffer with depression yeah. mm -hmm. and are on meds and. During the month of Ramadan, I think this could impact on their mood levels and, of course, when they're taking their meds. So, Ilanya, foods that will actually boost yeah. and enhance their mood levels, things that they need to take cognizance of and what should they do. I think because we know that food does have a huge role and influences one's behavior, mm. attitudes, and I think that, so if you can help us. Yeah, are there I foods that, that make you feel happy? <laughs> there yeah. are, guys. You have to understand that, a, a, in, I know it's going to sound very boring, but a food that it's, that's in its natural form, that's mm -hmm. either been plucked from the ground or picked from a tree. So in other words, anything that's raw, the body becomes immediately receptive to it the minute you put it in your mouth and start mm -hmm. to chew, because in your saliva are the enzymes that start to break down this food. Mm -hmm. And in our, you know, whatever goes into our body goes to our brain too in the form of glucose or blood brain barrier, whatever, whatever vitamins or minerals we're taking. And the only thing that is immediately receptive to that is a mm. raw food. For example, an avocado. Okay. I know it's quite boring, but let's just use that oh, as no. an example. It's stunning of us. I love it yeah. too. <laughs> I think you and I are very seldom in that because a lot of people don't like them. But oh, I love an this. avocado is the most wonderful thing. It's got omegas in. It's got the good. Mm. fats in it's got everything that you need and eventually and i know we're being silly now we're talking about one avocado mm. but a person and a fast is great for depression too i'll explain that just now sure. but a person who's eating a raw food over a number of hours every day for a number of days months and so mm -hmm. on starts to see that the way they're feeling mentally changes and if they're doing a fast along with it so they're fasting during the day and they're having their healthy breakfast and they're having a great dinner they start to feel mentally different never mind mm -hmm. physically and that motivates them the, i worked with a wonderful woman who actually phoned me and said to me i'm actually worried when this is over because yeah. i want to continue fasting and eating Very like true. this and i don't know if i can so you've uh, uh, in a single out avocado mm. what other foods or fruits or vegetables it's so extensive really nuts. any berry yeah. raw nuts as long as it's not oven roasted and salted raw okay. nuts any berry kiwi avocado um, spinach and kale but it, the list is extensive i'm just hand selecting yeah, now and honestly. the makers in our fish okay that's that's something else okay. if the fish has been caught off the rocks that's great but we need to be careful of the okay. wild caught salmons because those are still farmed and what they're giving the salmon to mm. fish is the problem okay. so unless they can so guarantee that they stuck their hand the in there and pulled it out and it's raw that's great <laughs> okay so let's quickly look at exercise now this is a big thing that yes. there has also been a question that's coming mm -hmm. i know of a few ladies that were thinking of starting to walk again a month ago and they said but then we only have a month and then we have to fast again so they're just doing brisk walks in the morning after you know sunset or sorry after yeah, sorry, sun, sunrise, they're doing this brisk walks, yeah. and um, now they want to fast. Is, is that something that they conti can continue during the, the month of Ramadan and if, fasting? If they feel that it's standing them in good stead, I don't see why not. The mm. only time exercise during any time of a fast, whether it's intermittent fasting or for religious purposes, becomes a problem, is if they're going okay. to the gym and wanting to oh, look become... At that. I love <laughs> that. Is if they're going to the gym and wanting to lift... 100 kilogram mm. dumbbells yeah. because of what's happening a fast is a fast it's a great thing but your muscles will not be receptive your mm. muscles cannot respond to that so that's not going to work so weight lifting is not weight lifting is up because mm. it is going to exhaust you really it's not going to take you three days to recover okay. after one gym session brisk walking is okay. great yogas are great oh here we go so yoga as you say you yoga, you're that saying, <laughs> yeah brisk walking now i'm just concerned people are not able to hydrate themselves after this exercise mm, fantastic as long as the walking 
brisk or whichever. Okay. That, that's, that there's a picture of a woman jogging there. That's mm. not so great. But a brisk walk in short bursts. So, for example, they're walking and they've 10, had a 5, 10, 15 minute mm. walk and they feel good. That's okay. great. The minute it's for kilometers and kilometers, no. that's a problem. No. So what okay. you're saying, Ilania, is everything in moderation. Absolutely. They, it cannot be excessive. No, it can't. Okay. And not because they're incapable. It's just because their body is going to just not work the properly. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be sweating fluid and liquid and water that the body doesn't have, yeah. they're going to become dehydrated. Well, so. they're going to deplete themselves Correct. of all their reserves. There there so brisk walking is fine if it's for a few minutes and mm. not for two hours. Jogging, no. Weightlifting, no. Gentle swimming, yogas, those kind of things are okay, but again, mm. not for extended periods of time. So okay. exercise is fine, but what kind of exercise and for how long? Okay, so now this is a question we need to ask this mom because she's saying that her son has a bad habit of exercising after his morning um, meal and um, he is tired oh, she's at least she's tired of telling him not to do this um, is, is it right for him to exercise now so no official question from our viewer um, when fasting exercising when fasting and again like you said you want to ask her what what you know what type of exercise he's doing she's lovely because we're all the same with our sons especially and our daughters i'm sure we're worried about them yeah, as long sure. as your son is feeling okay in other words he's not coming home leopard crawling exhausted mm. um, it's not giving him headaches he's not getting any spiked fevers or needing to sleep for extended periods of time as long as he feels good afterwards okay and depending on what he's doing what mm. exercise is doing and for how long it's okay yeah so i understand that anything that you're doing a lot like uh, Dr. Umar mentioned, in moderation, you're not depleting your body. Um, it's not excessive. This um, viewer would like to know, during the holy month of Ramadan, she uses it to get fit. <laughs> I am a female. Will it be harmful to exercise during the day? And which is the best time to exercise? She's lovely. Yeah. So, so, it's like, you know... <laughs> Again, I um, know you want to say no, don't <laughs> exercise, but you want to be nice. Just tell us the truth. I just, I just want Lania. to say that that the the fast the the reason why she's fasting is not to get into shape because yeah. the chances are, we after after this mm. wonderful time, she's probably still not going to get wow. into shape. I think that she needs to make a conscious decision of mm. what she really needs to do, and not to use not that she's using this as an excuse, mm. but that she needs to actually just you know buckle down and do it now i don't think it's the time okay. i i so. love adishaida we have a non-muslim advising us that you know ramadan is not about fasting and there's there are other spiritual sort of acts to get closer it to is. your maker it so is. when is a good time let's give her then a general answer after ramadan what is a good time for her to exercise as soon as she's made the decision that she wants to make a change and she doesn't need not an excuse, but she doesn't need a, a, an event to do so. Okay. Mm. So whatever's going to stand her in good stead and make her feel great is, I mean, the, the best time to start anything mm. is now. But it's not it's not a sustainable way of doing it. Uh, Dr. Umar, I'd like your opinion on uh, our elderly um, and those on, that are chronic medication and have chronic illnesses. They struggle to fast and emotionally it does bring them down to still be part of that spirit to still be part of the not you know well not starving yourself but staying away from food feeling that hunger pains um tell us about what they are going through and so your advice I think to them if we just you know look around and i'm sure many of us have had contact in our personal capacity with the elderly mm. often there's a reluctance not to fast Correct. you know uh, and and they become quite obstreperous of, around responding to any medical instructions and uh, right. refuse to so. listen so in order to i think respond to them or embrace mm. their philosophy or their approach to that the one okay. thing we, we always advise people out there mm. that they need to consult with their physicians. Uh, yeah. You know, each, each individual oh, okay. will have to be treated differently and each patient is unique. Correct. Correct. So in terms of their medications, it might need to be adjusted mm. for that period of fasting. 
Uh, so, I mean, Ilania, I don't know what your take is on that, but it is critical that they go and consult with their medical doctor. Okay, 100%. All right, we've got a call online, uh, Dr. Mad. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening. This is Health Matters. What is your call? What is your question, rather? Hello? Hello? Yes, go ahead. you live on air. Uh, I don't care now, now. I'm Okay, when is the repeat of the show? <laughs> Okay, so what happens is on a Sunday there will be a repeat. We'll give that information a little bit later on and we will also just check your uh, EPG <laughs> and repetitions. Press I on your DSD and you'll find out. Okay, so we are taking okay. your calls my with regards... That, yes? Um, my question is that I'm struggling... Uh, oh, pardon, yes. Can you, can, do you have a question for our uh, specialist in studio? Yes. Yes, uh, go ahead, ma'am. I'm struggling with fasting. In when I have fasting, I I I I get it so much hunger. So that is terrible. So what can I eat for fasting that and after? But okay. after fasting, I still have don't I, I don't have that energy to to that's the fasting with fasting is all night. Could could I just Which ask her a question? That is I'm good just interested in for so. and after that we keep it strong. Yeah. Angry, okay. I will on the Okay, okay. Ma'am, can I can I ask you a quick question? Is it throughout the month that you are fasting or just the first few days? Uh, no, I'm trying to, I'm trying to fast. It's, I can't even fast more than uh, Okay, months. sure. Thank you so much. Who am I speaking to? To Ntavisi. Ntavisi, where are you calling us from? From Free State. Free State? Yes. Continue watching, enjoy the show. We'll answer you on screen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. A caller from Free State. She has uh, trouble fasting. Correct. And I know that you've mentioned the first few days is a bit of a struggle. Yes. So is, is that the case with her? I think that we need to look at um, medically if everything's okay. So in okay. other words, no sugar problems, no um, organ mm -hmm. conditions, anything like that. Second of all, is she eating okay. the correct start to the day and is she eating correctly towards the end of her sure. day um is it sustaining her and also please go ahead yes Ilana, Ilana is raising something very important mm. often after people break fast they just l lose all energy feel totally lethargic mm. and feel uh just mm. totally helpless and hopeless they just feel absolutely useless they're exhausted okay. can't put it in front of mm. Mm. you find that a lot so what happens is when your body has been and we call it a state because when you're doing a fast for a consecutive amount of time and this is a, a while that you're mm. doing this when you come out of that and you start to eat normally your body actually does a double take okay. because it's running and when i say it's running on empty i don't mean it in a bad way i mean it in actually a good way because it's clean mm. it, it doesn't have to con your digestive system is not incessantly compounded mm. with food upon mm. food upon mm. food so when you break fast especially the first two to three days i see it and i hear about it often that they'll be, we cannot function. We were better when we were fasting. Feeling What's going weak, on? Feeling weak, feeling absolutely weak. Correct, and it's weak. because your body has started to get used to being without food. <laughs> being with so much with food, food again. Yeah. And it takes your body a while, and it mm. takes your body a while in that way. You basically have a food hangover. And, sorry. No, we're going to have to continue our iftar um, breaking fast and the guidelines around that after this, because that's a complete different ball game. As our, <laughs> our tables are laid out, and like they say, your eyes are bigger than your stomach. That's, that's, that's true, very literally too. We'll come back with more of your questions on eating healthy during this holy month of Ramadan. Back in a moment. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. We have our specialist in studio clinical nutrition, uh, nutritionist and uh, Dr. Shaida Omar Ilania will take us through our last few minutes as we wrap up. We're talking about iftar, our greasy foods, the things that we break our fast with. We know our stomachs are empty. What do we need to give ourselves? But quickly before we do that, um, a, a viewer would like to know, I suffer with terrible headaches in Ramadan. I end up taking painkillers every night to sleep. Mm, sure. um, is there things I can eat to prevent headaches during the day? So probably 
probably the morning she wants to eat something or he wants to eat something. That can be because her blood levels have dropped or because she mm. might be slightly dehydrated. She needs to be very clear and specific on what she's eating mm. when she eats okay. and if she is having that glass of water or if she's doing those kind of things. Once that's eliminated, we have to look at hormones. If she has a hormone imbalance, it will most likely become exasperated during mm. this time. But um, does this happen all the time. Is it, it sounds like every fasts? time when she fasts, every time when she fasts, mm. she suffers from this. Perhaps she's not eating enough when she's allowed to. Okay. And if she is eating enough, perhaps she's not eating the correct kinds of foods. So right. So let's talk about so correct types of foods. When we're breaking our <laughs> fast, you've mentioned earlier the raw fruits, the, the good things. And I often found that advices from medical professionals would say, you know, try and eat it on an empty stomach. So now you have a complete empty stomach, fresh and clean. What should we be breaking our fast with? <laughs> having fried samosas, okay. fried bajas, fried and more fries. Love it, it's fine. You know what? It's, I'll tell <laughs> I can't you why. believe she just said that. I'll, t I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. That's a beautiful picture. I love that picture. Oh. But every time before I do or speak mm. for what I do and the way I practice, it has to be realistic and it has to be honest. Mm. When you, when the time comes, no one's going to have a fruit salad. You're going to eat these wonderful foods. It's part of your tradition. Mm. It's deep rooted in your culture. And in all honesty, when you're hungry, a samosa over a slice of apple any day. Yeah. So, so what I'm what I'm advocating is don't. The problem isn't so much that you're going to eat these fried foods. It's how much you're going okay. to eat of it. Okay. Quantity. It's quantity. And I know that you're hungry, but if you allow yourself to eat and give a break between every time you reach for more mm. you'll see that your tummy and your stomach has shrunk to such a state you that can't, you, yeah. you can't really have more it's ourselves that force ourselves to eat so more. the saying your eyes are bigger than your stomach it's so true yeah. and we all do it yeah. go ahead so Ilania what you're saying is of course in moderation instead of having six samosas or a dozen samosas you'll have two samosas no don't have two dozen samosas okay have a dozen <laughs> because have half of the chicken and pass it on and then have because another no, half you know, realistically whoever's watching this is going to say obviously the nutritionist will say oh have a bit of a salad and a piece of chicken breast no. but that's not what's going to happen mm -hmm. so let's try and insulate it as much as we can eat what you're preparing and enjoy it just don't don't overeat don't put pressure on your digestive okay. system now and the healthier option of eating it when you are eating it because i know there are the air fryers there's the oven mm. there's the good butters and good fats does it matter um not 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 so much uh, I, I know i should be saying yes it does air fry or oven bake rather but the the, the mm -hmm. truth is that the problem isn't that so much as the pastries and okay. the puff pastries and so on and the spices if you have an ulcer can exasperate it so that's why i'm saying to insulate all of this and make it realistic for everyone who might be watching this eat it and enjoy it it just needs to be done in moderation so i think something that both Hawa and I have been talking during our breaks was around people with specific diagnosis, diabetes, yes, people illnesses. with kidney yeah. uh, dysfunction and other chronic mm. ailments and illnesses. Yeah. And water as well. Yeah, water consumption. Mm. Your advice. Let's bring it in there. It's very, it's very short and sweet. I've mm. only worked with a number that I can count on both hands of people that insisted on fasting mm. when they were very ill. It was either a cancer or a, an organ problem or diabetics, most of them were. Mm. And my advice was not to fast only because they were on incredible, powerful medications for obviously the different illnesses. And it was also the advice of the medical practitioner mm. not to fast. Mm. However, again, your traditions and, and your culture is so deep rooted in what you're so used to and what they were so used to. For them to not fast was not mm. an option. And the one gentleman fed quite well, whereas the others did not. Okay. Three of them ended up in hospital. But but having said that, having said that, again, I have to be realistic. I can't tell someone because you have a medical problem, you mustn't fast because they'll probably tell me mm. I'm going to in any way. And in a way, I respect that tradition yeah. and that culture because I understand it. We need to listen so, to our doctors. I'm just putting it out there. I agree. Oh, I agree. Water. When should we be drinking our water? How should we be drinking our water to help us hydrate? Because mm, yeah. I'm a water drinker. I need to drink water throughout the day. Correct. So when should I be drinking? Again, you have to understand that when you wake up and you think you're going to down four liters of water, it's going to sustain you. That does nothing to you at all. Mm. That is going to give you bloat and mm. it's not going to help you at all. What does sustain you and keep you fuller for longer isn't so much the water you're drinking from a glass as what it is your watermelons, your cucumbers, okay. your carrots. Because as your body is breaking down, 
the heaviness, the solidness mm. of that food, that water sustains you very long. Okay. So we just need to understand that downing water isn't really going to keep you. Interesting, interesting, mm. because I think the myth is that we just need to down the water. Not uh, so much. You, you know, have to drink water, of course, but drowning yourself in water is mm, not really going to stand you Okay, so state. celery, cucumber, watermelon, watermelon, uh, uh, carrots, that okay. kind of food. Try and put that Along on the with table. your water. Along, okay. Uh, and so shaving now, tea, would that help? I suppose it could. I just, it's, someone tells me that they do drink enough water because they have 20 cups of coffee Oh, yes, a day. I've heard about so, that. <laughs> so tea is okay. I mean, tea is fine. Not but coffee. ultimately, we need to keep ourselves hydrated during a very long period with no water. So Smoking is a bit of an issue. Some people ask, is it a good time to smoke, yeah, to stop smoking? Yes, because you're going, going through, you're going through all the stages in mm. any way. You're, you know, you, and it's such a wonderful time because your willpower and your mental strength is at an all-time high a couple of days after you you start mm -hmm. the fast, so why not? And I think what you say, the all-time high is not just about the fasting, it's Correct. about the sacrifice, it's about the spiritual closeness with your divine why. higher order. I like I that. Absolutely. And okay. the reason why you're doing it in mm. the first place. And mm. also ultimately, guys, a cigarette can be very great and delicious, but I mean, it's always a good time to stop smoking. So like now it's a good time. Unfortunately, we have to wrap up, ladies. In our last question, quickly, um, this viewer has an ulcer, but he doesn't want to miss fast or any yes. of the yummy stuff. What can he stay, he or she stay away from um, to prevent the, the ulcer being aggravated? Mental during and the physical fast, stressful right? environments, number one, okay. stress is an exasperate of ulcers. High industrialized foods, salts, spices, he needs to ensure or she needs to ensure that they stop eating at least two hours before they sleep because when okay. you do eat and you go and you lie flat mm -hmm. that exasperates the problem okay. refluxes those kind of things um again raw foods as far mm -hmm. as possible because that kind of sates and calms right. so we have 30 seconds or so to wrap up <laughs> i will give the first but to you elania oh yes yeah. yeah. <laughs> to you as our clinical nutritionist I just, just, just love, wow. the, love this process. It's such a beautiful, sacred time. And there are so many non-practicing Muslims that actually try to do it as well and mm. find that it's such a wonderful, stimulating thing to do. It's a beautiful practice. It really is. And just quickly, with that thought of non-Muslims, uh, also another question, non-Muslim friends ask, is fasting good for your health? And I usually respond that, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. Correct. There we go. It was a good response. Short and sorry. <laughs> just my quick comment here is that please consult with your doctor yeah, with you. please it's so yes it's important to fast but it's not it's it's worse it's an uh, assault mm -hmm. to your system if you fast and it's a sin it's a cardinal sin to assault your system okay. correct so well people said. must consult with their doctor correct. Correct. happy fasting if you're going to partake and to you as well uh Dr. And to all our, our, all our viewers, hopefully they will eat appropriately. <laughs> we pray that they will, inshallah. Have that samosa, have that pie and that dalchi. Alhamdulillah, much, inshallah. In moderation, will. but we appreciate mm. your time again, Lani. It's lovely and, uh, to be with you. It was so lovely having you, you as well mm. and the beautiful so advice nice. that you gave us. Thank you for having um, me. From a, yeah, from a non-Muslim, we it appreciate it. It means just so much more. So nice to be here. Um, Thank you so much. And you, so Dr. Omar, we will see you soon uh, after the holy month of Ramadan to uh, the IMA panel and yourself we shook it again for your time and your effort you put in no matter what um, we appreciate it we'll see you guys again after the solemn month Inshallah. of ramadan all the best and assalamu alaikum very good day to you thank we'll you so you. much and from myself Hawa Salaman, it is uh, an uh, auspicious month that will be uh, on our doorsteps inshallah let us go in with it heart body and soul and to your family as well a blessed month of ramadan into the last uh, of sha'aban wassalamu alaikum warahmatullah and a very good evening to you